Hi everyone, my name is Chase B. My name is Richard Tori. Greenhouse gas emissions from transportation account for about 28% of the total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions, making it one of the largest contrib contributors of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. And one of the solutions to this is the impl implementation of algal biofuels, as they can replace the need for gasoline, diesel, and jet fuels uh, when they are distilled into a number of petroleum-like products. In order to do this, you first have to grow the algae using sunlight uh, and then harvest that algae remove the water from the algae, algae through dewatering and then extract the oil from the dried algae and then convert that oil into al algal biofuels. The algae that is used in this biofuel production is unicell aquatic unicellular green algae, typically called chlorophyceae. Um, this type of algae is a photosynthetic eukaryote uh, char characterized by high growth rates and it actually can produce double its biomass in less than 24 hours. Another reason they use it is that it has a very high lipid content, usually over 50% of its biomass. In order to get to the step of oil extraction, you first have to dewater the algae. And this is done through um, external heating, but that's not really economically feasible. But so they use patented methods such as electro water separation devices, uh, which is used by Origin Oil, and then a solid liquid separation model, which is used by Algae Venture. In order to do oil extraction, it's basically a two-part process using both the mechanical press and the hexane solvent method, where the mechanical press squeezes the algae and secretes the oil, and then the leftover algae from uh, when it's squeezed is then mixed it with hexane to kind of uh, exhale the rest of the oil from the algae. And using both these methods successfully will extract up to 95% of the oil from the algae. And then once you extract the oil, you can now produce the biofuel and there's several different methods to do this, but the main method is transesterification. And basically what is done is they mix the oil, the extracted oil with methanol and a basic solution. And then that produces the molecules for uh, the fuel. I, there's a lot of benefits associated with alkyl biofuels. One of them being, uh, it is a renewable resource, meaning that when we need greater supply, all you need to do is grow more. As I said earlier, it grows very fast up to double in 24 hours. Another benefit is that it's carbon dioxide neutral, meaning that the carbon dioxide produced by burning the fuel is the same amount of the carbon dioxide that the algae took to grow and produce the, the fuel. Another benefit is that it's extremely productive. Um, compared to other sources of biofuels, algae is, can produce much more oil per acre, 10 to 300 times more than the second most producing uh, flora. Um, and finally, Algae is very environmentally friendly. It can grow in very many locations in basically any climate, and it's also virtually harmless to the environment. So when a spill happens, it's not that much of it's not big as a deal as a regular oil spill. So uh, when it comes to growing algae, there are two uh, ways you can do it, and each way has their own requirements. The first main way is using something called an open pond system, which is just to have it uh, be a, like a farmland and uh, let it grow out from there. Uh, the requirements for this would be that you need a lot of space as a result because you're growing it out in that land. You need up to four hectare acres for it to be uh, environmentally, in order to be feasible. Uh, that land has to have a lot of nutrients and the temperature has to be around 12 degrees Celsius, but you also need a lot of CO2, more than what's regular there, regularly there in the atmosphere. So you need to make sure that that's uh, at a high level. In closed loop systems, uh, you have you replaced a lot of space with uh, a building, and to grow that algae, you use tubes that um, have them growing in there. But the uh, trade-off is that you need more people on site for uh, maintenance and to keep track of it. Uh, the technology for uh, closed loop systems isn't exactly very mature, as the amount of energy put in is more than the energy put out. So more research needs to be done and more money needs to be used for that. Uh, there are several criticisms of algal biofuel. The first one is the cost comparison. So as you can see, the comparing bioenergy to other ways of renewable energy, uh, bioenergy is the second most expensive. Um, so this bio, when in this table, bioenergy not only refers to algal, bio, uh, algal biofuel, but all, all types of biofuel, as mentioned previous, um, we saw previously that algal biofuel was the most effective and uh, the table's uh, contents 
revealed that the algo biofuel was uh, put more emphasis. So the comparison works. The biggest site specification, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is CO2. Um, there was a study done by uh, UC Berkeley and they gave a weighted average for what was the most important when growing algae. And they said that CO2 accounted for more than 51% of like the importance. Um, and this is very difficult because you can't use like regular far farmland in uh, rural areas because the atmosphere level of CO2 is not enough because the algae requires so much for them to grow. If you compare the renewable energy in terms of like how much electricity it produces for the sun compared to from solar panels and biofuel, you'll see that solar panels are much more efficient when it comes to extracting uh, sunlight energy and turning it into electricity. So on that level, solar panels are better than biofuel, but this comparison of course does not factor the economic costs. If we compare the biofuel plans for an open, an open system and a closed system, we see that despite the, it's difficult to see due to the scales being a little bit messed up, but for a closed system, it's a lot more expensive. Uh, it's euro per kilogram when compared to the uh, open system. And the, we see that in order to get good results, like cheap results, the amount of cost reduction that's required is about over 50%, which is not feasible in many areas. Uh, as a result, uh, more research needs to be done in order to drop the costs so that uh, using algae is a viable solution. Thank you. Thank you.